What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and this is that Bolo's Top 10 Back Issues to be on the lookout for for the week of April 15th, 2020. This is the third week we're going to do this, and each week the list keeps getting better and better, Jack. Oh, man, I appreciate that. Like we said, this is a living list. It is constantly growing. So you can take these 10 books, add them to your previous two lists. We've got 30 books in the can now to be paying attention to. Um, books to eye for the future. A lot of books with a potential to gain in value over time. So uh, let's get into another great list, 10 great books to be on the lookout for. Yeah, so it's important to know also a lot of these books are affordable. We do have a couple on this list that are a little bit up there in price, but there's still room to be made on that, some fruit on that vine, right, Jack? Yeah, yeah, and we try to have a, like a variety of pricing. We want to have something for everybody, um, but definitely, definitely everything on here really feel like there's still some meat on the bone. Right, we're getting into it right now, starting with number 10. And then coming in at number 10, we have Uncanny X-Men number 244. Now, this is a book we also just talked about on another video, right? Yeah, we just talked about it on 10 undervalued or underrated X-Men books. And, you know, I, I think that's why we're talking about it here. Um, you're going to see some crossover between a few books on that list that will probably show up on future top 10s here. And this, of course, is the first appearance of Jubilee. And if you ha didn't see that video, the main thing we talked about about what makes this book really underrated is the fact that I strongly believe, and there's others in the community who believe, that the future X franchise coming under Disney and the MCU will really be strongly influenced by 90s X-Men. Um, they've really put a lot of energy and effort into the animated series promotion on the Disney Plus. It was one of the most popular uh, pieces of content upon the launch of that service. And I really believe that Disney is paying attention to this. So Jubilee is a character who was front and center during that 90s X-Men run, who has been kind of forgotten in later years, really, uh, kind of pushed to the background. So because of that, this book sitting at about $10, it is a great buying opportunity. Uh, it's a book I regularly pay attention to in back issue bins. You'll see it for as low as five. If you're looking online, I, I'd be targeting about 10 to $15. Yeah, it's also important to note we have this full list over on SimplemansComics.com with links. Just click on the title, click on the pictures, and it'll take you to eBay for all the available copies there. You can check that out. And we have a little bit more information about each of these issues over there as well, and that's at SimplemansComics.com. Then coming in on our nine spot this week, we have Web of Spider-Man number 18. Now, I know this as often referred to the first cameo or the, the, the appearance of the hand of Eddie Brock, right? Right, the hand of Eddie Brock. We get the cameo of the black suit. Is it the first symbiote? This, this one is one that's debated upon um, in several different categories. Uh, but the reality of the situation is I'm not going to play politics and say, you know, it's definitely ASM 299 or it's definitely 300 or it's definitely Web 18 or it's definitely Marvel Team Up 141 or Secret Wars number eight because you can see how yeah, I go Pokemon style on that shit. And catch right. Them all. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel about it. Um, and I think 300 really may have like um, not exceeded the price range that it potentially could hit. But I just think that the room for growth is Minimal. less. Yeah, yeah. I think because it's, it's, it's already a play that's been made by so many. Um, and books like Web of Spider-Man 18, the thing that I think that carries value for them is they go in cycles, right? Right now, no one's talking about these, this book, so it's, it's, it's down. Um, but at every, every kind of year, Brian, you and I see this in being a part of this YouTube comic community, that I think we never saw it back in like the message board days, but that there's an influx of constantly of new people that come into our hobby and new people learn about these things and all of these different appearances. So things you and I may take for granted. Um, they, they, when they learn, they become fascinated. They want these books. And they, I believe that that is really going to ensure that every one of these um, symbiote related firsts or cameos or, or what have you are always going to be in demand and are always going to have value. I also think that, and I've said this on other programs on our, our channel, um, as well as another channel where I did an interview. Um, I strongly believe you're going to see the black suit Spider-Man in the MCU. I strongly believe you're going to see um, Eddie Brock interact with Peter Parker. 
And because of that, I think all of these books are going to become relevant even more in the coming years. Yeah, and if not MCU, you're definitely going to see it at some point in the, the Sony... Sony-verse. Spider-verse. Yeah. Here at number eight, sticking with that Spider-verse, we have Amazing Spider-Man number 299. A lot of people know about 300, but also 299 is often regarded as that first appearance of Venom, right? Well, I'm going to tell you straight up, to me, that's the first appearance. You, you know, you have dialogue, even if it's just stating his name. Um, you have a, a beautiful kind of last page, splash page. And I understand that the community plays the cameo first full. Again, same things we just talked about. I'm fine with that. I, I'm not going to make an argument in either direction. The bottom line is, I still think so many people aren't aware of how like beautiful and prevalent that page is. And how much value I believe needs to be put into this book. And I'll say it like this. If Amazing Spider-Man 300 is a $300 book, then very easily $299 should at least be $100 to $150. But it's regularly traded for between $20 and $50. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was thinking $75 to $100, but $100, $100. Either way, it's undervalued and affordable. Yeah. Yeah. It's out there. Um, it's, it's a book that I will find regularly on the concert and you can find at good prices on eBay and at online shops. Hitting us at that number seven spot. We get some Jack Kirby goodness and new gods. Number one, there's a lot of book you hear real comic collectors. You hear it come up in conversations. Well, it's a great issue. But for those that like we talked about that are new to the hobby, this is a perfect issue to pick up because it's got like 15 first appearances in it all together and it fits right well into that whole DCEU that we hear about with where Justice League was going, right? But either way, tell us more about this one. I love this book, Brian. I really think um, we've been talking a lot about MCU um, speculation over the last year, right? And we've been talking about kind of the domination that MCU speculation has had over the DC Extended Universe speculation. And rightfully so, right? The DC movies have fallen flat. Um, but the reality of the situation is that provides a lot of great buying opportunities for classic DC keys. And you're going to see that as a common theme in the coming weeks on this list, that there are a lot of DC keys that if you were to make a Marvel comparison, um, it just, it, it doesn't make sense where the pricing is. Um, and I think that that is because so many people are down on DC comics and that can change with a couple good movies. Don't forget Joker was a smash success and granted that wasn't really handled by DC. It just shows the fact that these characters popularity is there and what the potential for good movies done with these characters can do. Um, and new gods, if, if you're not familiar, a movie is coming. It's written by Tom King. It's going to be directed by Ava DuVegne. It, it's going to be a major, major move for DC. It's their move into the cosmic realm. Um, and, and the other thing is Tom King, he, he really popularized a lot of these kind of fringe characters in the mo with modern comics with his Mr. Miracle run. Um, so I think you're going to see it heavily influenced with Mr. Miracle. But this book, New Gods, number one, is important because the movie, from all accounts, seems to be titled New Gods. So we've seen the value in the past of the title and the books related to the title and the weight that that carries. And if you're not familiar, I think a, a very good um, comparison here is the Eternals, because you're going to get two celestial kind of teams, for lack of a better word, um, both created by Jack Kirby. Eternals is printed far, far, far more than... Uh, new Gods. You see it regularly in high grade with Eternals, not so much with New Gods. New Gods will vary in price. Um, I have found them below 100 when the book isn't hot, above, slightly above 100 when um, kind of there's talk in the news. It's a soft time right now. I would really be on the lookout for this book. The reality is we know a movie is coming. Um, but even if it wasn't, this is one of those classic, classic DC keys that it's only a matter of time before the attention on this part of the universe really makes this book in demand. Then coming in at number six this week, we get New Mutants number 100. Now this has what, that New Mutants team and X-Force, right? Right. Now look, I know that this is one that there is a certain part of our community that is going to slay me for this because I know that this is truly one of the largest printed books of all 
time. There's just no doubt about that. Um, it, it is a book prevalent. I see it in the same dollar bins you see it in. I see it in there in, in great quantity. But here's the reality of the situation. Um, everything is anew with these Fox properties coming to the MCU. And I really believe that X-Force is a property that can be a big, big winner for, for Marvel. Uh, it can be a vehicle for, say, Deadpool to have his own team. And I know that they kind of did it, and they did it in a very joking manner. Deadpool. Deadpool, too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I think that the formula that Disney has had, where you've got individual movies and then having characters come together for these team-up movies, we saw them do it with Defenders on Netflix. We see the way they do it in the MCU. It's, it's truly a tried-and-true uh, strategy for them. So I, I, it, it's already been talk of that happening on the Disney Plus service. So I really think that that's what's going to happen with Deadpool's area of the universe. And X-Force, it is a very good bet to be a, a prime uh, piece of IP for them. And the reality is, if you're going to tell me how high it's printed, then obviously it's cheap. And it is. It's readily available. This is a good book to grab. When you see them in dollar bins, you'll find it online cheap. I, if you're looking on eBay, look in lots um, because you'll tend to get that lower buy price. Look for those later prints. Some of those later prints are printed in lower quantity than the earlier prints. I think there's like three prints of this book. Each has a different color cover. Um, but this is one that I have no problem putting a small stockpile of these books together because you're talking the first appearance of X-Force and we've seen over the last 20 years kind of X-Force has always been that cool team. And I really think that that can play out on the big screen. Yeah. I mean, it's just like that poly bagged X-Force number one that had the trading cards in it. Right. I mean, it's overprinted, but there was a time where the Deadpool movie came out and that X-Force poly bag that had the Deadpool card, people were buying that yeah. for like 15, $20. And yeah. there was like, whatever. So this book, just what you say could go along those lines. But either way, if you're, I'm not a big X-Men fan, but I do like X-Force. So this is one of those books, like just as a collector, you kind of want to have it if you aren't aware of it. Yeah, yeah. Then number five, we're going to talk about a second print here. That's right. Everyone knows that first appearance of Miles Morales. We're talking about Ultimate Fallout number four, the second print. Yeah, and we're specifically looking at that uh, variant, that white cover, Sarah Pacelli variant. Um, it is a tough book to find in good condition. And for a long time, I found these books. And I, it, this is one of those things I know that it regularly can sell now for like 15 to $20. So some of the newer collectors may be shocked when I tell you this, but this was a dollar bin book for a very long time. I've seen a lot of things in the last 10 years within the comic community. I've seen second and third prints once deemed as invaluable suddenly be become desired um i've seen that this book which seems so odd when it came out a variant of a second print so there's a second print that looks very similar to the first print yeah it's just the head's actually above the yeah trade dress i, yeah. I really hate that book um and then and then this book which this cover is amazing um these portrait covers which were not common at the time and have become extremely popular especially with like the dc cover these um the, the tear with Miles Morales, the kind of sad look. It, if you know anything about the character, it just, there's so much in that one cover. Um, that Sarah Pacelli being the artist who co-created the character with Brian Michael Bendis, I think to me, other than say, of course, the, the incentive variant for that book and the first, and, 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 and the first print obviously has value for that reason but this is such an iconic and important book i feel like it should kind of be that 1a or 1b and, and it doesn't really get that kind of a love love it's it's grown in value yeah. um but, but there's a big gap between the two yeah and i re and i really think that even the first print of ultimate fallout um while it's spiked tremendously in the last couple of years I'm, I'm surprised at how much that book has really gone up um, I still think that book has unlimited potential because if you think Spider-Verse cartoon movie can spike a book, can you even imagine what a Spider-Verse uh, live action film done right would do to these books? So, But that second print, that's why we're going to talk about a lot of books like this on this list, Brian, because you know this is a different play to make. And, and I know that some people's gut reaction may be to be a little hesitant. I'm not saying that this book is better than the first print. I'm just simply saying at the buy-in for this book right now, this book, they, there's a lot of potential for this book to gain in value, um, possibly at a higher rate than that, that first print. But either way, 
for a lot of you out there who may be looking at that $75 to $100 price tag on the first print, you may say, I can't do that, but this I can do. Yeah, and it's all about the room to grow out the way I see it is yep. always that first print's going to garner. And then, of course, the incentive variant. But I think that second print is undervalued, in my opinion. And then coming in at number four, this isn't so much a cheap book, but it is a great book. And we're talking about Swamp Thing number one. Yeah, and you're right. Not so much a cheap book. Um, but it is a book that... Way cheaper is, than House of Secrets 92. It is. And it's also a book that's way cheaper than it was just six months ago which is why I think the, this book is a really a book that's made for this list. It hits a couple categories that we've already talked about. It's a, it's a major key. And we said, talked about DC keys in general just being down. But about six months ago, after the Swamp Thing show got canceled, a show that everyone loved. It. Yeah. Even though it, that show... It, it's worth picking up just for the rights and right. rights oh, and art. Oh, no, no. You want to talk about PC? This book is one of those books that yeah. gives me the feels. You got to have it in your PC. But... Um, after the Swamp Thing show got canceled, you would think that that would usually kill the demand of a book, but it really didn't because most of us were really surprised that DC delivered such a riveting and well done and, and great looking Swamp Thing show. Um, I think it, if anything, reignited demand in the entire Swamp Thing, not just that character, but then all related characters, Justice League Dark and everything going down the line. You talked about uh, House of Secrets, and that book has just taken off. And it's a, it's a really tough book for a lot of people. And similar to other characters like Blade, Moon Knight, that we've seen where pricing gets in kind of that similar yeah. sort of stratosphere, people have started to look for other options. I think, I think Swamp Thing number one, as well as Swamp Thing number nine, which is another, you talk about classic rights, and um, those are books to really pay attention to. But six months ago, I was really stunned at where the pricing was because it had had really escalated it's dropped down solidly another thing to think about is convention season these are popular wall books you know when you're talking about swamp things number swamp thing number one is a very popular book to have on a wall and um, number nine is that iconic cover yeah, that you mentioned exactly another one that's popular to have on a wall because they look good they're always in demand people always want them for their pc um and dealers have not been able to sell these books this year. So they've, they're available right now. And they're available, again, I'm not going to try to mislead you and say that these books are incredibly affordable right now. They're still going to cost you some money. But, you know, they are down from where they were a year ago. We know that a Justice League dark movies in development. So they're not even close to where they have the potential to go. And they are the type of books, because like you mentioned, classic Bernie writes in kind of key gorgeous covers um and then we know later on in the run what alan moore did with the writing um these are must-have yeah. uh pc books and it, it, even if the investment doesn't pan out you will you can't lose money when you buy keys like this it's like buying a blue chip and if you can buy a blue chip when it's down that's the time to do it yeah. and i mean we didn't even mention that this issue is like the it's got the origin story of Swamp Thing in it. So. Right, right, exactly. The one that we have now seen play out yeah. um, on the TV show. So we're down to that bottom three. And then coming at number three this week, we have X-Men number 94. This is like one of those paramount freaking issues, right? We got the start of uh, Chris Claremont's run. And we got an introduction of that new X-Men team, right? Right. So this is one of those ones where it's like, I've heard this one brought up. Um, kind of like as for a couple different things like you know there's arguments about this book versus giant size x-men yeah. number one arguments with this book versus hulk 180 and hulk 181 um being that this is where we get the wolverine that like we all kind of know as a part of the team um either way it, it, whether or not uh any of those things like we kind of talked about with other books, whether or not the politics of what category or what tag is given to this book, the reality of the situation, it is, it is an incredibly valuable book because it's, it's essentially an X-Men number one. It has a 94 on it, but it's like you mentioned, it's, it's the start of that Claremont run. It's really when uh, X-Men took over comics yeah. and uh, it, it's got its hands in so many different jars and it's a book that over time has been 
very valuable and expensive. And it's just one of those books. It's just down right now. And there's a lot of mid grade um, to lower mid grade copies available on the market right now at shockingly low prices that make it kind of affordable for even people who don't think that this book would be affordable. And if you're building one of those runs and maybe this was a book you were waiting on, now may be the time to pay attention. Yeah, it's definitely one. And it's one that's hard to find in high grade just because of that dark cover, right? Oh, and given really, the time really period tough. that was released, but. Then coming in at our number two spot this week, we talked about Tom King. Tom King kind of wrote about this character, but this isn't the issue we're talking about. We are talking about Mr. Miracle number one, volume one, right? Yes, yes, of course. And then we're talking about the, you know, the first appearance of Mr. Miracle here. And you talk about another iconic, gorgeous cover that just looks amazing on any dealer's wall. It just captures uh, that, it captures that time period of comics. It was it like really, a... It really does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it was a time period where it, Jack Kirby was playing with all of these kind of fantastic characters, colors. Um, it was very different. It's a signature style that... It, it's almost like a... If you could put pictures, words to pictures, it's almost like a Ray Bradbury type sci-fi mm -hmm. look that he was doing back then. Yeah, and, and it, it was also a time period where... Um, I liken it to a lot of like sports situations. Like it was a little bit of Brett Favre, like Marvel sort of looked at uh, Jack Kirby. Like maybe he was over the hill. He didn't have anything <laughs> left to give. Um, and DC brought him in and were very happy to have. Yeah. Except know, he wasn't shooting wiener picks out. To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Brett Favre was. <laughs> but, you know, it was, uh, you know, that DC was very happy to bring him in um, and, and have such a kind of an icon um and they let him sort of have his area of the dc universe and create and we got some some characters that for years were kind of slept on and undervalued and mr miracle really is front and center when you start talking about that but tom king writing the character reinvigorated the character and we've seen this back issue kind of boom and i remember sitting there a couple years ago at heroes con in charlotte i was there with my brothers and I was looking at the value of uh, Mr. Miracle, which I'm not going to say what it was, but let's just say several times less than where it is today. Um, and I remember saying, I need to get on Mr. Miracle because it's only a matter of time. And now we're a couple of years later, and now I'm playing catch up as Mr. Miracle, as we said, is going to be front and center part of the New Gods movie. Um, and it's it's really this book with how gorgeous this cover is and how um, how kind of iconic it has been over the years uh the potential for a game is really unlimited and i love the fact that tom king's writing the movie because i feel like that's going to give this movie if nothing else if it's not this huge blockbuster success i feel like it'll definitely speak to the comics community we have the best chance of having a movie that really represents this jack kirby um collective of characters so you will see in the coming list that I'm very bullish on anything related to the, this, this area of the university's new gods properties. We're talking about other books in this Mr. Miracle run for sure. Yeah. And I also want to just say like, if you hear us talk about Tom King and you're like, Oh man, we're not talking about Tom King, Batman, although yep. I kind of like the Tom King Batman run, but Tom King, we've talked about this before on this channel. This is his element, like that vision series he wrote. And then like the Mr. Miracle series he wrote, that's, what he's known for outside of you know the spy books and the Grayson and stuff that we're used to but I think he's perfect in this and I'm looking forward to this I just hope those WB executives don't slice it up like they've been known to do with yeah. some of these DC movies after they get done with it yeah. so either way yeah. even forward to Mr. A Miracle one way or another movie or not it's just a great book to pick up for sure Ava DuVagny's a great director Tom King's a great writer if they just leave him be it's gonna be money yep and here we are, the number one spot. Real quick before we get to that, do us a favor, click that like button. Also, if you're new here and this is your first time watching this video or on this channel, consider subscribing, click that bell notification that way you get notified of all the future videos that drop. But at our number one spot this week, we have Batman number 655. A lot of times you hear about that variant for this, but we are talking about that regular cover A, right? 
Yeah, and you can really apply anything we're going to say to cover A to the variant. Yeah. The only reason why I tend to play for the cheaper play is that a lot of times the ROI percentage is higher. Um, and also it's easier to obtain multiples. Uh, and if your per, kind of uh, your percentage is the same, you can kind of stack quicker that way. Um, so that's always been my strategy. Yeah. And like you, we you talk about conventions. A lot of times it's easier to find because they're in the boxes where the variants up on the walls and people are buying those and you can find the right. cover A's in the boxes for what, 10, 15, $20. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the book has kind of it. It is. You it goes, about, it's another one that book, right? Anywhere from ten to fifty. Um, right now, it's kind of sitting in at that like fifteen to twenty range, which I think is just money buy. Yeah. I I love paying twenty dollars for this book mint. Um, and I and honestly, I would buy an ungraded one that looked eight oh eight five and pay ten. I have no problem yeah. with that because. It, it, we've talked about this on the channel in programs, but not for a while. I don't think there is a better modern DC key than Damian Wayne. And I defy anybody to tell me another character that has more going for it. Um, yeah, I, you look at like the popularity of a, say a character like Harley Quinn. Um, I think the only reason, and this may be a bit of a hot take. Yeah, I know that book is printed less or this or that, but it's one of those things where it's like, the only reason Harley Quinn is pop popular compared to Damian Wayne is Harley Quinn's been able to develop. Harley Quinn's not the same character today that she was originally. I don't know if that original version of Harley Quinn would have gotten her own movie and this, that, and, and, and so on. And this version of Harley Quinn, didn't that movie didn't do so hot. And you can blame for whatever reason you want. But this is Batman's son. This is... By far yes, tied to one of the great Batman villains. Right, tied to one of the great Batman villains with Ra's al Ghul, one of the most, uh, you know, badass uh, characters that really, if you've ever read the comic, uh, just that's ever been associated with, with the Bat family. Um, such a unique story. Great relationship with Dick Grayson. Um, great relationship with Bruce Wayne. And when I say great, I don't necessarily mean these are rosy relationships. I just mean they're entertaining. Yeah. Um, Alfred. Uh, you know, his relationship with Alfred. It, so all of these, uh, I, I'm very excited for the future with Damian Wayne. We've said on this channel that we really believe that the key to comics being an evergreen forever thing is that these characters have to develop. And we've spent so much time investing in the future, whether it's Lobo's daughter or, uh, you know, um, Kingpin's daughter or Batman's daughter or Joker's daughter. We've got everybody's child. And at some point, we have to see these children kind of grow up and take the mantle. So we're going to talk about some Damien books in the coming weeks. I really think Damien Wayne is one of the best bets there is. And at the current pricing, I just cannot imagine um, that there isn't some incredible, incredible room to grow. And we've seen, look at punchline, yeah. look at what's happened with Harley Quinn. There is almost no better area to be investing than something Batman related. And I mean, what's more Batman related than his own child? Yeah, and like you mentioned, just, the stories are just so good. And also, if you don't want to read the stories, that DC animated movie, Son of Batman, freaking phenomenal. I mean, that yeah. right there gets you kind of what it, you would expect. That's from. really true. If you watch that, you will get an idea. And, and how can you not sit there and go, man, you are just one money casting away from this character stealing the show on the big screen. I'm not going to lie, if you're not used to it, the, you're, at first you're going to think he's a spoiled-ass brat, but he's, he's supposed really to be. Character. Right. He's, yeah, there's, he's supposed to be an, antag an antagonizing character. Uh, you know, there's, there's issues with not being raised by his father, with uh, viewing Dick Grayson maybe as a replacement, uh, you know, for him. So there's all of that competition, the fact that maybe he's more skilled than Dick Grayson. Maybe he's more skilled than Bruce Wayne. So there's just so much that, that, that goes into that character. Uh, his his re relations with Talon during the Court of Owls storyline. Just just great, great, great um, content there. So if you haven't checked out that character, we talk about the value of reading and how it can help you with your investing. That's another prime example. 
So there it is, guys. That's episode three. That's 10 more back issues to be on the lookout for. Do us a favor. If you have a friend that would be interested in this, share this video out to them. Also, if you haven't caught the previous ones, we got them up on the end screen right now. You can click on one of those and watch the second one or the first one we did two weeks ago. But either way, this is Jackie Brown with Superman's Comics. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video.